All right, so here's the situation. I built a team where every Pokemon on it does the exact opposite of what the Pokemon is designed to do, and we're gonna see if it can win a Wi-Fi battle. Before we get into it, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps out the channel, and I appreciate it. So here's a preview of the team, just so you know what we're working with and you can kind of understand <laughs> the vibes here. So first of all, we have Choice Banded Physical Attacking Gengar. Next up, we have a Special Attacking Bastiodon with all sorts of coverage, kind of an anti-meta fella. Uh, we have a Physical Attacking Suicune, the first time anybody's ever used that shit. <laughs> we have a Special Attacking Choice Specs Machamp, the absolute goat. Uh, we have special attacking Flygon, and then a special attacking Persian. So let's go ahead and get into it, boys. So I'm gonna go ahead and lead off with my Machamp as my opponent tosses out the Torkoal. Now, Machamp doesn't have a whole lot of options when it comes to special attacks. He kind of just has Focus Blast and Fire Blast, so he'd be blasting out here. Um, but the turtle's looking over here at my buff-ass arms thinking I'm probably gonna get attacked by something physical. So after he takes one Focus Blast to the face, he decides to go for the Will-O-Wisp. Uh, which is going exactly according to plan, because when you see Machamp, you never expect a special attack, and uh, he tries to half my physical attack. So Hector says, I don't give a shit about being burnt, I was raised by the streets, and now I'm just gonna go ahead and blast that ass one more time, and <laughs> that takes care of the Torkoal. So, so far, the team is going kind of according to plan in that I have the element of surprise on my end, and they're not gonna really be able to predict what comes from this team. So, uh, let's see if we can keep it up. Anyway, in comes Infernape, and now this thing is a little bit of a problem to my team, um, because of the fact that these things have the ability to um, be mixed attackers with the overheat, especially in the sun, really nothing wants to switch into that, but it's alright, I do have the Suicune. Um, first time I've used Suicune in forever, and of course it's a physical variant, so... <laughs> Let's see how this goes. Uh, it goes for the overheat in the sun, and that's going to do a shitload of damage. I don't care how big of a water doggo you are, that is going to definitely hurt. And um, after some leftover recovery, it's looking like I will be able to take a close combat uh, to be able to hit this thing with an attack in return. Although, with the sun up, you know, waterfall is not going to do very much here. It reduces the uh, damage from water attacks, but I've got to do kind of what I can here because the Infernape is an absolute threat. So. Uh, I do live the close combat there with my big stringy ribbons and my absolute bulk. I'm able to go for the waterfall. This dude's probably like, did that man just use waterfall with a Suicune? He has absolutely no idea what the hell's going on. And, you know, that's, that's great. So <laughs> I'm able to get this thing into red to the point where now I'm confident that I can just go for an extreme speed. I am able to take care of the Infernape and physical attacking Suicune has just taken its first victim of all time and you absolutely love to see it. So Infernape was a big threat to my team, uh, so it's good to see that thing gone. And uh, Sun is still going to be up, I imagine the Torkoal has the Heat Rock, so going to have to deal with some Sun for quite a while, but it's fine bitch, I've brought my SPF 70, we are prepared. But in comes young Pinocchio looking ass the Shift Tree. Uh, this thing is a huge threat in the Sun because of the fact that it has Chlorophyll, it's going to be able to outspeed everything and hit super hard with the solar beam. So I decided to just go for an extreme speed. Um, you know, Suicune kind of did what it needed to do. I'm able to just get some chip damage off on Shiftry here and kind of sack this thing off. So I guess, you know, Yuzine did not bring enough SPF for that, but you know, it's fine. Suicune goes down and now this opens the door for a free switch in. Now the only thing that can really deal with Shift Tree is gonna be the young wall face. So I bring in Donald Trump's prodigy um, and I have a plan here. Now the plan is, I want to be able to get up some Stealth Rock because I know that's going to help me in the long game here. They have mons like the uh, the Heatran, there's a Dragonite back there that's going to really benefit me if I can get some hazards up for it to switch into. Uh, so I know that I can take at least a Solar Beam or two. It should do less than half, at least what I'm planning for. Uh, so this thing does, does go ahead and fire the old laser beams at me, does less than half, which is amazing. And this allows me to get up the Stealth Rock. So. The fact that I'm able to live one more solar beam is fantastic news because now Basti has the opportunity to absolutely end this man's whole career with a fire blast and uh, I really would like to see that happen. So I go for the fire blast here as Shifty decides to go for the dark pulse. Now that's a good play because he was expecting the flinch or at least trying to get the flinch so that he could then kill me with a uh, solar beam. But the wall don't flinch, baby. I'm able to connect with a Fire Blast in the sun and absolutely roast and toast my dude over there. So, Shift Free goes down, the sunlight goes away, and we're back to uh, some, some nice, respectable weather. Um, now, in comes Pachirisu. This is an annoying little squirrel who's generally always going to be some type of 
uh, just support, which, you know, is you hate to see, but it's at least something that I know I can work around a little bit. So he decides to go for the light screen, reveals he's probably going to be working with the light clay item, uh, dual screen, something like a super fang, maybe a nuzzle. Um, and I decide to stay in here. I go for the ice beam just to kind of scout what this thing wants to go for. Um, I know that none of my team really wants to take a nuzzle. Being paralyzed is really going to kind of throw a wrench in the old plan. So um, I actually just end up staying in here again, going for another ice beam as this thing does nuzzle. So, you know, he's cute as hell over there, but I really don't want to be fucking nuzzled by you today, squirrel. I'm sick and tired of your nonsense. And my ice beam is doing about negative damage. You know, Bastiodon's not designed to do a whole lot of damage. It's mainly here uh, to have things like Fire Blast for opposing Scizor, Ice Beam for dragons, you know. Uh, just kind of be an anti-meta. But here I click Thunderbolt because I'm thinking maybe he switches into Heatran on an Ice Beam. But he actually switches into Dragonite on the turn that I click Thunderbolt. So I'm like, wow, that was kind of the worst case scenario as I would have loved to get uh, an Ice Beam off on old Dragonite here. But I know now that Dragonite is for sure going to want to dance in my face. And if this boy starts setting up and I'm not prepared, I'm going to be in a world of hurt. So I decide to directly switch into Flygon on the turn that I'm expecting the Dragon Dance. Young Goggles comes in and Dragonite does start dancing. So, I mean, this is mostly fine. Knowing that I'm Choice Scarf, I can still outspeed this thing at plus one easily. And then I can drop a Draco right on my boy here. So the fact that I was able to get up the Stealth Rock is amazing because I broke its Marvel scale. I'm thinking... Draco Meter should have pretty much no problem here. Um, so it connects and it actually ends up living with red HP and that is horrible news because now this opens the door for him to just go right for an Outrage and that is going to take care of Flygon. So looks like the light screen from the Pachirisu did really kind of fuck me up here. So um, yeah, I guess I'm going to have to find a new workaround here. And this is really bad because my team does not deal with this at all. Other than the fact that I have Bastiodon still. And we should be fine as long as I don't get fully parried. I know that I can take at least one Outrage and then kill it with an Ice Beam in return. So he is locked into Outrage. My boy is pissed off and cannot be stopped. Um, I am able to luckily take one more of these, but he does get confused, breaks him out of the Outrage, and of course he is working with the Lumberry. So uh, it gets rid of that confusion and I get fully paralyzed. So there was my chance. The door was open. The wall, all you had to do, my guy, was just throw some ice at this thing. Hardly breathe on this Dragonite and I was able to take care of it, but the para does come in clutch for them there. And uh, now this, unfortunately, since he's not locked into Outrage, can just finish me off with an Earthquake instead. And this is turning out to be the worst trade deal in the history of trade deals and the wall goes down. So now I'm thinking I really wish I would have saved Suicune with that extreme speed because the only way to kind of work around this would have been to be able to outspeed, get some priority action. Um, but now I decide to go into Gengar, and the reason for that is if I can get this thing to lock itself into Outrage and then get Cursed Bodied, uh, we'd be able to meme on him. But he does end up just going for the Earthquake. R.I.P. to Gengar in the days when he had Levitate. Am I right? Or am I right? That shit would have been really nice here. But of course, now I've got to be touching the ground, and then Gengar just, you know, goes down. So... I'm down to my last two Pokemon that is going to be my Persian and the boy Hector. So I decide to go into Persian here and there is a scenario I found out where if this thing, if this Dragonite isn't fully invested in speed, if it has like 100 EVs or less in speed investment, I should be able to potentially outspeed. And as you'll see here, he actually ends up going for the extreme speed. So I'm thinking he might not have been max, um, max speed. He was probably invested in HP or something like that, but regardless, Somehow, the Puthy is able to take care of the Dragonite after living in extreme speed. And boys, there is a chance for the squad here. So, now he decides to go into the Heatran. Now, this thing is sitting at full health and an absolute menace of a Pokemon. But I have the Machamp in the back. So, my plan is to essentially just stay in here. Um, hopefully, get off a Shockwave. But he actually reveals to be Choice Scarf. And that's going to take care of the Persian. So, that was kind of a, a weird speed tier series of events there. Um, assuming that that Dragonite didn't have speed investment and was adamant. I, that's the only scenario why he would have clicked uh, extreme speed, but it's given me hope, and now my boy Hector is ready to do it to him. So I know I can live a flamethrower easy, because have you seen? This man's got a six-pack on his back. He's not afraid of shit as the <laughs> flamethrower comes through. Uh, I take that nicely, and of course with Machamp's ability no guard, it's kind of the only scenario where Focus Blast would have hit so many times in one battle. So... Honestly, Specs Machamp is kind of nice. With no guard, you can just literally land Focus Blast all over the place, and nobody sees it coming. It's like a double whammy. Um, 
So that takes care of Heatran, and then the last Pokemon is going to be that Squirrel. And it's looking like it all comes down to Hector if I can beat up this baby little Squirrel. Uh, I mean, there's something hilarious about a Machamp never using its arms. It's like the whole point of this Pokemon, but this Machamp says, I'm fine. I don't even need him, boy. I got the power of, of focus on my end, or whatever the hell, you know, Focus Blast could possibly be as a fighting move. So this thing went for the light screen there. Uh, generally, Pachirisu does not have any, like, physically, or any damaging moves other than, like, Super Fang or Nuzzle. So I should be able to take an attack here. He does go for the Super Fang. Of course, I'm able to live that nicely, and then Hector fires off one more blast at him. And ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be the end of the match. That was a super weird battle, but I had a whole lot of fun with this team. Um, let me know if you guys want to see some more matches with this team or this kind of style of gimmick. Uh, I think it could be pretty fun to experiment with. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.